I've got my Betaflight V2 copter flying pretty well, uh, and, and the tune is just about right, I think. But I'm still working on one or two little things, and I thought I would share them with you since, since I'm going to be working through it anyway. May as well make a video. <clears throat> the issue that I'm working with looks to me like noise. And so one reason I wanted to share it with you is because uh, I wanted to just give you a picture of what I think noise looks like uh, in flight. I haven't looked at the black box logs at all, so I don't know if it's going to turn out that I'm right or wrong. But I've said that that P-term oscillations are they're pretty obvious once you know what they look and sound like. You can hear them from halfway across the flying field. Somebody will be flying and you go, oh, his, his P gain's too high. But noise, the effect of noise is a little more subtle. Uh, it's kind of random. I've described it as almost being like driving over a bumpy road. I've also described it as being kind of jittery, like uh, like if you had too much coffee in your hand, it's a little jittery. I, I what I'm trying to capture there is that it's not really periodic, uh, in that it's not regular. It's not a regular oscillation at a at a given frequency, but it's and it's not even necessarily back and forth. It's just kind of twitch, twitch, twitch in sort of random directions. So let's take a look at this video, and I'm actually going to play the video here in uh, VLC. I've also got it loaded up in the black box viewer, but I really want to make sure you see it in, as clearly as possible, so I'm going to play it in VLC first. Okay, so I'm going to go back now. It just happened, and I think it's it's sort of all the time, but it, it was what I felt like was a really clear example of it. And I want to show it to you again. It's just a little sort of backy-forthy twitch. Almost like almost like your eye was jittering a little bit. Let's watch it again. And it's just coming up here. Let's watch it one more time. Right there. And I, gosh, I don't even know if you were going to see it in the screen capture. I'll play it one more time so you can try and see it if you didn't. Now let's keep watching and see if they, we see it anywhere else. I think you should. And actually, you can kind of see it there. Again, just this whole pass as I go over these trees, there's this almost just little jitteriness to it. Watch it one more time. So I hope you can see that, and it, uh, I will find out when I play it back, I guess. Uh, if not, if I, it's not visible on this screen recording, and then I'll upload a sample of the original video, the raw video, to YouTube, and, and hopefully it'll be clear there. Uh, it, it's not jello, right? So it's not the sort of high-frequency oscillation that causes jello in the camera. It just clearly doesn't look like that. It's just this little random twitches just all the time. Does makes it look like you're not flying. The copter is not flying very smoothly. And certainly if, if we were in a scenario where we had a lot of wind, maybe, or turbulence, maybe, but it's not, it's everywhere, and it doesn't have anything to do with whether I'm flying into the wind or across the wind or whether the wind is even blowing. It's just all the time, these little random twitches like that. So let's take a look at Black Box and see if we can figure out what's causing it. Well, I've got Black Box queued up now, and I'm going to play it forward, and let's find that spot where, where there was that jitter. And it was right there. And let's just take a look at our gyros and see if we can see what they're doing. And it looks to me like it's more in roll than it is in pitch. So, in fact, let's, it really does look like roll. So let's just take pitch out of there so we got the cleanest roll as we can. And sure enough, we can kind of see it, I guess. I mean, of course we can see it in the gyro. Here, here, and let's see if that corresponds with it when I play it forward at 50%. In fact, I'll play it forward even slower, uh, just to be sure I don't miss it. Right there. Yeah, that's it. Now, what's happening there? That's the next question, and that one's going to be a little harder to answer. Well, as always, the first thing you want to do is you want to check to make sure that you didn't bump the stick. Whenever you've got motion in the copter that you think is a tuning problem, Check your RC command and see if, if you bump the stick. Now, I don't think I bumped the stick there, but it certainly couldn't hurt to be sure. So let's bring up RC command roll. And no, nope, it's, it's 
pretty clean there, right? So we don't see any stick moves that would have caused these little jostles. Okay, well, I didn't think we would. Let's get rid of that. We can see here that there is definitely some response in the P term. And in fact, it's very interesting if we look at this pass as I move it forward, just look at the sort of general size of the P term. And notice that like right here, the P term is, it's kind of just moving sort of randomly. But then when we get right here, we start to see, I would call this P term oscillation. Now it's not the hard oscillations that you would you know, you think of somebody punching the throttle and the copter goes, wah, you know, and that's P-term oscillation, right? That's like the most egregious example of it. But if you just compare the way the P-term is moving here to the way the P-term is moving right here, this is starting to look like P-term oscillation to me. And if we keep going, just these three little peaks, one, two, three. Now, see it's going down, it's going up. There's some moving around back and forth, All right? Here's a peak. Something happened here. And by the way, notice also the gyro went down and the P term went up. I wonder if we could figure out which of those things happened first. Well, since the stick is not moving, no, it had to be an, a response to an external input because we know the stick didn't really move. So the P term is responding to the gyro. Hmm. Or is the gyro responding to the D term? Is the D term amplifying some noise, which then the P term is counteracting that amplification? Hmm. Well, anyway, here's a little twitch here. You can see the P term goes, and now the P term is back to being relatively smooth. Smooth P term, smooth flight. Bop, 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 right here. That exact point that I called out. P term is 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 kind of going nuts here. And then back to smooth flight. Smooth flight. Here, these stand out to me. Here are a couple of jumps in the P term. This, here we go. Now we've got some sort of, you see how this is kind of periodic? The, the spikes are at about the same spacing. Oh, now it's getting bigger. It's getting worse. Oh, man. Oh, now, now, whoa, the P term is going bonkers here. Whoa, what is happening? This is not a, I'm not really, I'm not, maybe it's because I'm flying over some turbulence as I go over these treetops. The wind is coming over the treetops. Maybe. I don't know. But that sure doesn't explain what's happening back here. I'm just flying straight and level. I don't know. I didn't fly over anything. And, and I got a little twitchy here. So I've definitely characterized what I'm seeing. And I really think it's a great for you guys to see this type of thing. And this is a nice, well-behaved P term. It's 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 a dog on a leash sitting on a porch, and this is starting to get a little anxious, right? Starting to get starting to bark a little, you know. Now we don't want to see it. We basically don't ever want to see the P term being as as active as this because it's usually going to produce uh, instability in in the gyro and make your make your camera footage look bad. Uh, I have to tell you. If you look at the FPV feed, you don't see any of this. It, it could be because it's standard def and these little oscillations just kind of get, you know, they get filtered out because the standard def feed is such low resolution. I don't know. You really don't see this. But any, I, I really never want to see the P term being this active, especially if I'm seeing the results in the high def camera. So the real question that I have, though, is, is my P gain too high? And then the second question that I have is, is what I've got here noise from the gyro being amplified by the D term? In other words, is my D gain too high? And I don't know if that's going to be a very easy question for me to answer. I can see that the magnitude of the D term is not consistently bigger than the magnitude of the P term. And in fact, here, we've got the P term significantly larger than the D term in this example. And here, 
the P term. Notice that like right here, the P term goes yoop and shoots up. And the D term zoop, shoots down. And it's actually, is actually, look at the PID sum here. Notice that as the P term is rising, the D term is falling. And the PID sum is actually falling. Oh, I apologize. That's the gyro. I'm so sorry. Hang on. Let me put the PID sum in here. Forget what I just said there for a minute. PID sum of roll. Oh, there we go. That's that's more like it. <laughs> uh, I, I thought something wasn't right there. So here, the P term is rising. The PID sum rises with the P term. The D term falls and is actually counteracting that sharp rise. As it rises, the, the D term is falling. So it doesn't look to me like, yeah, but then the, the D term rose here. I mean, we could just chase this all the way back, you know. I think the fact that I'm seeing that the D term is not large, it's, a, it's a, the same or lower magnitude than the P term is suggesting to me that my D term is not excessive. If I saw that the D term trace was, was much higher, then I would, I would start to wonder about that. Well, I, I've kept thinking about it, and I, I'm not so sure about the P term conclusion now that I think about it some more. Because what I came back to was that the sort of semi-random nature of these oscillations is not consistent with p-term, with excess p-gain. And also, it doesn't really seem to be tied to throttle position. It happens at low throttle position. It happens at high throttle position. And that is just not how excess p-gain works. So I, I'm going to have to do some trial and error to see what fixes it. Uh, but uh, what I want you to take from this video is, this is what I think excess noise looks like. This kind of, these sort of semi-random twitches like I showed you at the beginning. And, uh, you know, it's certainly possible that if we've got noise being amplified by the D term, that if the P term is on the edge of, it's just not tuned to the, to the max, but not, no oscillations during normal flight. But then as soon as the D term starts flipping out because it's amplifying noise, it flips the P term over into oscillations. And I wonder if maybe that's what we're seeing here. Because we definitely see, if we look at the P term trace, we definitely see some oscillations that are that look like excess p gain but we just don't see anything during actual flight that looks like excess p gain so i'm going to try it both ways i'm going to try reducing d gain and i'm going to try reducing p gain and i'll see what fixes it it's certainly going to be one of those two and i hope that was helpful and happy flying